from the time already of Pope St. Gregory the Great, who died in 604, the statio of this day is Santa Croce in Jerusalem, that is one of the seven major basilicas in Rome, Holy Cross in Jerusalem, and the liturgical texts hover around the theme of that place, Etare Jerusalem. It is the name that is given the title Etare Sunday to this Sunday, as Gaudete Sunday happens in mid Advent and allows us to have a little extra in the otherwise somber note of Lent. It was very much felt in the monastery where the prohibited coffee would reappear on one day, where flowers would reappear and the organ also would have a burst. Joy we need, but a holy joy. We notice that Jerusalem appears also in the first reading, comparing the two covenants. We are freed, but we often, if we're not careful, <coughs> rebind ourselves. We are not free when we tie our own knots, when we create our own needs from which then we cannot be free. As it happens, this week I could not but think of the link with Santa Croce in Jerusalem, because it's that one week in the year where they call me back. The monastery of Abadia San Salvatore was for many years under Santa Croce in Jerusalem. And by the way, it's called in Jerusalem because of what happened when they brought back the major relics from the Holy Land after they had been found by St. Helena, the mother of Constantine the Great, but also the land. They brought back enough soil from the Holy Land to have a bit of Jerusalem in Rome. Hence the title, Holy Cross in Jerusalem. But therefore I was back in that ambiance for which, by the way, I have the authentic relic of the Holy Cross. I've told you before how it happened. It was cut in three. This one which went to make a new foundation in Guadalajara, and then the foundation didn't take off and it came back. It was split into three, and I had one. It's now in my tabernacle in the second chapel I have. There I was with my friends, and I would like to share one or two things from this experience because actually it concerns us all. <laughs> when one goes on an annual basis, to do a very beautiful thing, which alas in Ireland we haven't got, the Blitz, the annual Blitz. It's all the houses in the whole of Italy, as far as possible, are blessed individually. One goes inside, one goes round the rooms, one blesses the people and the rooms, and the church comes to the people. Hence it is that in a country like Italy and Poland and other Catholic countries which have maintained these Easter blessings, there is a very strong bonding with the people because what happens? Oh, Father, if you only knew what has happened since you were here last, and out come the tears. That's real pastoral work. That's being a priest, not sitting at a desk, handling bits of paper, red tape, and telling lay people what to do when the priest should be doing it. The priest should be with the people, hearing their pain and going into their homes to see the nitty-gritty of what life is, not theorizing, but feeling, and then wiping up these tears. I was warned, this time you're not to hear confessions when you go around, it takes too long, but they want to get to know you properly, and when you've got them, they come back. And in the most unexpected circumstances, you bless everything in sight, doctors, surgeries, legal places, even aesthetic beauty places. And amazingly, they come out of the woodwork and want to come up to you even there. Father, will you be in church tonight? I mean, yes, in a beauty shop. I want to go to confession. That's real pastoral work. Right next to the people, where they open up. Why? 
because you've got them in their context. You're not talking down to them, they're relaxed there where they are. And they spring clean the whole house because they know the church will be there in their house once a year. That's all one Easter celebrated on every level. But I want to zoom in to one point, it's this. It's the element of pain and joy combined, which is our life in this world. Every human being is in pain. It's just that some are able to handle it better than others. When one is close to pain, one has to tread on tiptoe. All one can do if the pain is severe, and I mean emotional pain usually, is just let the person be. Just be there. The last thing the person wants is an easy answer. It's just another indication that one has not understood. The only answer is silence. But there is also the language of the body. And that sometimes is the only one that gets through. In Italy, there's a big cultural difference. People cry very easily, but people also embrace very easily. And that's a huge healer for the hurting soul. God has given us the ministry of helping each other in pain. It's important, my friends, that we realize that people need people. But then it's not enough. When people are at rock bottom, then at last also they open up to the vertical. And that's when the word can come in, when they actually will pray. And the vestigial faith which is there will come back to the surface. And there are very few out there who actually would not pray with you. Even young people, they know what to do. And actually there's one thing too. The huge nature of the church worldwide comes through because in these places, lots of the elderly ladies are looked after by people from Romania, Bulgaria, Russia, and all these eastern countries like the Ukraine, where also the same thing happens massively. And they do exactly what you're doing the other way around, but they know what's going on, and one feels this is our huge worldwide family based on the same things, Christ in the midst. And by the way, do you know that Putin is not afraid to witness to the gospel at Easter and to say, above all, Christos Roskresi, very different to our people in Ireland who have a neutral Christmas and a neutral Easter. It's interesting to see what's going on on this big planet of ours, but this is our faith. Christ in the midst, Christ who cares for our pain, enough to actually intervene in this multiplication of bread. I finish with this. Frances Hogan, in her first time in Africa, saw it happening before her eyes. People would come at the crack of dawn from kilometers away for the first mass and they would bring a few things to eat. This would go into a pot and they'd dip in. They would come again for another celebration later and another one later on. And she looked carefully at this pot and she twigged, this is a miracle. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people coming all day long and the level was always the same. It only stopped when the last person was served at the end of the day. And this miracle happens again and again in Christian history. I have a friend who has seen it happen in her hands when she was working in Spanish Harlem. She only had a certain amount and was told by her superiors only a little, and she couldn't actually do it. A strong man needs more. So she gambled with providence and power, and before her eyes she could see the miracle was happening, always the same level until the last was served. It's also happened in clothing in Africa, it's on YouTube. Not only food, but clothing. By the hundred they were giving up from these bags, all they had, and 
the level was always the same until the last person was clothed. God is God of all. He cares for his people. And we needn't be afraid or shy, for Christ is on side.